Two very quick questions. So you mentioned Afghanistan. We still have Americans over in Afghanistan. Do you think the Biden administration is doing enough for to get those Americans back out of Afghanistan? We've all been critical of the Biden administration not doing enough to get them out there, giving us numbers, giving us names, who is there, how, what can we do to help. All of us have worked, trying to work through the State Department to get them out. Remember, the President said he would leave no one behind, the troops wouldn't come out until all the civilians were out. That just did not happen. It was another one of uh, President Biden misleading the country, which is why his role in Afghanistan, 62 percent of the Americans really do not approve of what he did there. Second question, just, just very quickly. Um, uh, now that voting reform has, has gone away, we still have to fund the government. Do you think that the Democrats should be focusing on funding the government and keeping people, uh, the government, employed? Well, so, you know, Senator Shelby is working from the Republican standpoint with Senator Leahy on making sure that we can get the government continued to stay open and funded. Yeah. Senator, uh, Leader McConnell said yesterday that Republicans don't plan on putting forth an agenda ahead of the midterms. Instead, they're going to use the midterms as kind of like an indictment on Democratic running the House and the Senate and President, uh, President Biden's uh, leadership. Do you, is there any risk in not providing an agenda and going into the midterms? Two of you are running for re-election or just decided that you're going to run for re-election. Is there any risk in not having an agenda when you're running? I don't know, you want to I, I'd love to answer. <laughs> um, the agenda is pretty simple. We know it works. It worked under the last administration. We, we stopped adding to the regulatory burden. This administration is putting the regulatory agencies into hyperdrive. And you make sure you maintain a reasonable and a competitive tax system. And you then respect the American public to do what they do a great job of. They innovate, they create, they dream, and they aspire with the freedom that our government should be protecting, but that is right now being frittered away. So again, I, I think the Republican agenda is quite clear. We don't have to spec, you know, specify everything, but we're for letting the American people live their lives with as the less amount of government interference as possible, but lower regulation, a competitive tax system, and let Americans be Americans and make this country great. Well, I would just say uh, very quickly, someone who's running, I speak for myself, not necessarily for the conference on this, but. Uh, it is going to be a referendum on this administration's policies. I think that's what midterm elections typically are. But with respect to what I think we ought to be talking about, I think it's the things I mentioned. It's the economy. It's the, the high cost of everything right now, which has uh, been exacerbated, complicated by a lot of wasteful spending. So stop the wasteful spending. I would make the 2017 tax cuts permanent to make sure that there's predictability, stability out there when it comes to people who are deciding about where to invest money and create jobs and better wages for people in this country. I would have an energy policy that doesn't obsess with electric vehicles and actually focuses on American energy independence instead of having to go hat in hand to the Saudis or the Middle East or someplace to get energy which we can produce in this country and we know it until it would been shut down by this administration. I would, I would get Trade Promotion Authority uh, going up here and pass so that we can isolate China in the uh, Asian Pacific when it comes to trading and, um, and develop some of our allies in the region. And, um, and I would do something in the area of big tech. I mean, we had several bipartisan bills that create greater accountability, uh, greater transparency um, on, on some of those issues. And of course, that kind of harkens back to my days as uh, chairman of the Senate Commerce Committee. But I think there are a whole range of things that Republicans can be proactive about. And um, yes, opposed to this administration and this uh, Democrat majority's policies here, which have been disastrous, uh, but also talk about those things that the, uh, that the Republicans would do that would help improve and provide a brighter and safer and more prosperous future for the American people. And a lot of that is focusing uh, on all the things that have been mentioned today. I'll just, I'll just add to that very quickly what John said, which is stopping what they're doing and then, yes, providing an alternative. And we've done that. Let me give you one specific area where we've done that on defense. The President put forward a budget to cut defense spending. It was supported by Schumer, Pelosi, the budget chairman, Bernie Sanders. And we collectively came together and said, no, that's not what the American people want. That's not what the American people need. And that was a huge rebuke. Passage of the NDAA by big bipartisan majorities 
was a direct rebuke to the Biden administration's vision for defense. And by the way, the leadership in the halls of Congress on the Democratic side. If you looked at what the House put forward in their NDAA and what we put forward in ours and what came out, we rejected almost all the far left craziness that they put in their defense bill. So stop their far left focus and put forward what the American people want, which on this one was strong defense, and we did that. And then I would just say on energy, stop that madness, as I just mentioned, and a number of us have put forward a very detailed plan that builds on the positive aspects of American energy independence. It's a no-brainer. That's been a bipartisan goal of American policy for decades, and they just have sought to destroy it with no real reason. So I think those are two areas. We're doing it already. Yeah, Senator Risch and Senator Menendez are talking together. You know, you take a look at what Democrats voted for not that long ago, which were the sanctions against Nord Stream 2, stopping the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. You take a look at what Tony Blinken said in his confirmation hearings in the United States Senate opposing the Nord Stream 2 pipelines. And then Joe Biden, I mean, you talk about the hypocrisy. He comes up here then to get Democrats to filibuster he wants to get rid of the filibuster, but use the filibuster to block what Ted Cruz and I and another number of us have proposed, which is bipartisan, but didn't get the 60 votes on doing the blocking the Nord Stream 2 pipeline at a point, as Senator Sullivan said, kill the Keystone XL pipeline, but allows the Nord Stream 2 pipeline to go on. Now, Senator Menendez's bill says they got to stop the Nord Stream 2 pipeline only after an invasion occurs. And I think, look, that's not a deterrent. That's kind of a punishment for bad behavior. We need to stop it now to deter Russia from going further. John, can I just add? Sure. Just, I think one other area of bipartisan uh, agreement that I've been talking to a number of senators on is getting the Ukrainians more weapon systems. Not just the Javelin, but anti-ship uh, systems, anti-aircraft systems. And I think there's a number of us who are very interested in that on both sides of the aisle, trying to push the State Department to get on that much more quickly. But that's an area, in addition to sanctions, working with our NATO allies, you probably saw a number of our NATO allies are actually trying to get shipments of these kind of weapons to the Ukrainians. But that's another area that can happen quickly. And a number of us are pressing the State Department in particular to approve that much more rapidly. Well, there's a bipartisan group working on that. Mitt Romney's part of it. Susan Collins and Joe Manchin um, is part of it. You can talk with them. I think they're going to have a meeting next week on that specific thing, and it is bipartisan. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Well, number one, I'm a doctor. Uh, I'm fully vaccinated, and my wife, our family, uh, you know, had the, the additional booster shot. I believe in vaccines. I oppose the mandate. I think it is a huge overreach by government that the government doesn't have a right to come into your home and tell you you need to have a vaccine. That's for you to decide, talking with your health care providers and others and making that decision for you and your family. The Biden administration spent an awful lot of money in March and under the name of COVID relief. But you know, the more people have died of COVID under the Biden administration and over the previous administration. People fact check that. That can't be right. Well, it is right. And that happened actually sometime last year. So 
we want to get this behind us. Joe Biden ran for president saying he was going to put it behind us. He failed woefully. They failed in testing. They failed in treatment. He was so fixated, had tunnel vision on the mandate that he ignored the real needs, which are the testing and the treatment for people that did test positive. Right. Anyway, I think it's like the well, last question. Thank you. President Trump has criticized the legitimacy, question of legitimacy of the last election. And then yesterday, uh, President Biden said that the midterms could be illegitimate. What can he say? Could be illegitimate. What message does it show the American people that the last two presidents have, could have questioned the legitimacy of our election? When I look at what Joe Biden said yesterday, that says he's a guy that knows he's going to get beaten badly, knows he's going to lose the House, lose the Senate, and he just wants to say, don't blame me. It was the, the, the system itself. I know what people are asking for in Wyoming, ballot integrity, ballot accountability, ballot security, and that's done best when the states run their own elections and have voter ID not when Washington has a big bill like they tried to pass in the United States Senate by the Democrats, removing voter ID. There was the, the, the president's spokeswoman was on television this morning saying people need more drop boxes for their ballots. You know, there are mailboxes all over the country. There are post offices everywhere. Mail-in ballots exist, and it's a lot easier to vote, certainly in Wyoming or in Georgia, than it is in President Biden's home state of Delaware or Chuck Schumer's home state of New York. And they ought to try to clean up what's going on in their states before they start pointing fingers at other states. Thanks so much.